In this section, we'll look at spatial data formats and geodatabases within ArcGIS. This is part of Chapter 4 in the Tutorial Manual. We started out looking at tables, geocodes, table joins, spatial joins, and now we're looking at spatial data formats and geodatabases before concluding with calculating geometry. First of all, there are two legacy formats we'll discuss, coverages and shapefiles. A coverage is a folder with multiple files. These can have points, lines, and or polygons. They have several intermediate data products to speed up processing. As a legacy, uh, as a legacy file format, these are not formats that are currently in frequent use within ArcGIS, but you may encounter data that was collected in the past and saved in previous versions of ArcGIS, and you'll need to bring them into your data and use them in ArcMap now. Here's how they would appear within our catalog. And notice in this case, you have a folder catalog tree that shows coverages and then a number of files that appear to be interrelated, and that's the coverage setup. Each one of those then includes an annotation file, feature classes, and various choices of point, line, and polygon uh, file types. Another legacy format is the shapefile. Multiple files may be shapefiles, all with the same name, but different file extensions. So there are no intermediate data products, but they have indices to speed up data processing. They're widely used to share spatial data files. And notice that there are a number of different files that appear to have the same file name, but with different file extensions. All six of these different files, they're all different file types, need to be present in order to make use of a shapefile. The main shapefile itself has the .shp extension. Other file types you'll find include information that run about the database, the DBF database file, and information that has to do with the projection and the way that the image then is drawn on the screen. Here's an example of how a shapefile will appear in the catalog tree. You can preview it and show its contents and description in the catalog tree. It will have a .shp extension. A geodatabase is a container used to hold a collection of data sets. GIS features, tables, raster images, and other objects. You've been using geodatabases in class all semester. Enterprise geodatabases have practically unlimited size and multiple simultaneous users. Use enterprise data management systems to store spatial data sets in a number of database management systems. Personal geodatabases parallel the concept of an enterprise geodatabase, but on a PC. They store databases in a Microsoft Access .mdb file, and they're limited to 2 gigabytes. It's tempting to apply one's own access skills, but you need ArcGIS catalog utility for manipulation. A better choice is the file geodatabase, which we'll see in a moment. So for now, don't use the personal geodatabases. Choose file geodatabases instead. File geodatabases are an ESRI replacement for shapefiles. Vector and raster map layers may be put inside a file geodatabase. You may have other objects in there as well. But you should not store map documents, that is map projects, with the MXD extension inside the file geodatabase. You may store more than one or more data sets in a folder of files with the .gdb extension. They can be up to one terabyte in size and can be used across platforms. They can be compressed and encrypted for read-only and secure use. So when you create a geodatabase within ArcMap, or within our catalog, choose the file geodatabase option. In order to view geodatabases, keep in mind that you need to work in our catalog. If you go into Windows Explorer and attempt to view a geodatabase, it will not show up. You might see the folder with a .gdb extension, and then it appears to have uh, files in it that are not usable to you. So in order to view it, do it within Art Catalog. Here's the view you would see within Art Catalog. 
So this shows a Maricopa County geodatabase with census data and tracks. Non-ESRI vector formats are also usable within ArcGIS under the concept of interoperability. This is the ability of different vendors' hardware and software to share data. It's driven by the Internet with standards evolving for open data access. Over 110 different vector file formats are available in ArcGIS data, data interoperability extension. The reality is that you can bring in some different data file formats and you'll do that as you become a more frequent GIS and a more advanced GIS user. K KML, Keyhole Markup Language formats, are also important for internet-based maps. These were originally created for key by Keyhole Incorporated for satellite images and purchased by Google to become Google Maps. They provide a set of features, points, lines, polygons, images, text, with latitude and longitude coordinates plus altitude for 3D viewing. KMZ is zipped KML and associated files needed to upload Google Maps. You can import and export KML, KMZ via our toolbox in ArcGIS and you can upload to, Geo to Google Maps from your computer. XY data can be very useful within GIS. Basically, this functions inside a point data table with X and Y coordinates. XY data can easily be displayed on the, on the screen for further analysis. It's commonly used with GPS data, and often when you go out and collect GPS points, you'll be collecting GPS, you'll be collecting XY data, which can then be easily displayed on the screen and manipulated from there. And that concludes this section on geodatabases and data formats within ArcGIS.